recording. Well, good morning, everyone. Sandy Hannigan here. Uh, some of you uh, will be listening to this live, and others will be listening to this at another uh, at another time. Uh, so, I have here today Mary Jane Patola directly from Echo 360. Uh, she is going to give you a great overview of um, Echo and how you can use it in your course, um, in your Blackboard course, and that is the platform that we'll be using here. And just so that you know, we will have follow-up sessions, uh, little mini sessions at uh, a later time, possibly this month. So um, we'll circle back with you after you uh, go through this webinar and um, you'll be able to bring in any questions that you have and we'll actually have a hands-on session with you so you can add this to your course. So Mary Jane, I'm gonna turn it over to you and um, thank you for being here. No problem. Thank you, Sandy, for having me and welcome to all the uh, Northampton Community College users, faculty, I appreciate you taking this time to learn more about how ECHO 360 can be used in your teaching, no matter what modality you teach. So as Sandy mentioned, um, I am going to demonstrate, to talk to you a little bit about why use ECHO 360, what is ECHO 360, and we're gonna start by accessing it through Blackboard. What I have on my screen is a demo Blackboard um, instance. So it may look a little different than your Blackboard, but in essence, it's the same. So of course you log in and I'm gonna log in as an instructor. You would log in uh, using your Northampton Community College credentials. And then um, when I go to my courses, I can see what courses I have um, listed where I'm an instructor and I can click on those. And most schools, and I believe Northampton has this as well, has the ability to click on a left-hand navigation. That left-hand navigation may say Echo 360, it may say Echo 360 Library. Every school is different. When I click on this, it will connect me to my Echo system. So you'll see I am still in Blackboard, but I also now am within Echo 360 within Blackboard. And these are courses where I am an instructor, okay? So we wanna start with, um, what I wanted to do is I made a class for today called NCC October 1, and I actually uploaded a presentation where I can actually present directly in a synchronous manner or even create an asynchronous uh, review of material before after class for my students. What I wanted to do was start by clicking on this presentation and showing you how I can share and teach in a variety of different manners. Again, I created this presentation in my native uh, uh, platform, PowerPoint, and I uploaded it into Echo 360 and put it into a course. I actually am gonna expand this to make it full screen so everyone can um, see it. And sometimes this is, there we go. So I wanted to open that in a new tab. Now let's, let's um, talk about what is Echo 360. Many people have used Echo 360 in the past in a lecture capture. Your great team at Northampton had set this up in your classrooms, your physical classrooms in those days so long ago where you walked in and you taught real students in a real classroom and you really didn't do a lot. You um, got it recorded and it was shared to your students or lived in your library. But things have changed, but an Echo has been able to do so much more than that traditional lecture capture. It is a cloud-based platform that really facilitates active learning and engagement before during and after class or even events. Um, we, in this age of COVID-19, exceptional online and hybrid teaching really is your best uh, resource. We do work with some schools that have limited social distancing or small classrooms, or maybe there's some uh, disciplines that definitely need to still have students in a class. You can still use Echo, whether it's scheduled for you or you use it in an ad hoc manner. Um, most of you are probably teaching in a live hybrid classroom or online environment, such as what we may be presenting to you now. And some of you may be teaching in an asynchronous online environment where you're providing content for students to review in their own uh, time and their own way. And that's fine. Echo can support all of these needs. 
We also work with the other tools on campus. As we just showed you, you can access Echo right from your learning management system. So you don't have to really, um, you know, log into multiple different things. We also work with your video conferencing tool. So whether you're using Zoom or another um, web conferencing tool, we do have the ability for you to upload that those videos into Echo. The benefit of that is that you do save quite a bit of uh, time, storage costs, um, and it provides you analytics that you don't typically get. Um, if you are using Zoom at Northampton, and Sandy, are you using Zoom? We, yes, we are using Zoom. Yeah, so we can um, set up, if it's not set up already, um, a Zoom integration can happen where you can launch Echo 360 directly uh, from, or you can launch Zoom, I'm sorry, directly from Echo 360, and it can upload into your library where you can do whatever you need to do with it, maybe edit it or share it to a course, or if you want, you can upload it directly to the course um, so that it sits there automatically, simple and easy. Um, in addition, we teach, we fill in the teaching and learning gaps. So it's been a real uh, tough time for many of our faculty to really um, transition from that traditional teaching methodology to an online or hybrid. And we realize that, but we're here to help. So no matter what modality, you're going to get active um, engagement with your students. Um, it also gives you the benefit of measuring impact. So why use Echo instead of what may be built into your LMS or maybe instead of just using video conferencing? Because none of those tools can do what Echo can do and really measure the impact. So you not only see at a high level what your students are doing, but you can see at an individual uh, student level how they're interacting, provide you the ability for um, intermediate outreach. You also can see where there may be struggles in understanding of the content. How many times do you see students in a, in a live class um, and they look confused? You can sort of get that and you stop and you pause and you can, um, uh, address that material again. With Echo 360, those analytics can give you insight into content where students are reviewing it over and over again, perhaps giving you some um, insight into content where you may need to address it in a different manner or in addition to what you've done in that initial class. Um, as mentioned, we also increase that interactivity with your students no matter what modality of teaching. It enhances your instruction and it simplifies that transition. It um, also takes into effect security and um, it saves money for institutions as well. So no matter what modality you are teaching, Echo 360 can support that. Live classroom, live hybrid and online or completely asynchronous. Um, what I wanted to do was jump into the platform. We are going to jump back here and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how different schools have used Echo, but I wanted to jump out of the platform and show you a few different things. So um, I am going to go back into Echo and we're going to talk about a couple different use cases. The first one may be one that you don't use often, but it is a way to use Echo that I think would really enhance your live online. And that is completely asynchronous delivery of material. Why would you do this? Well, maybe you wanna engage in a discussion in your video conferencing. Maybe you want your students to come prepared to discuss about things or to review some material before you start class on a new subject. This is a great way to use um, Echo 360 in an asynchronous manner. Echo 360 can be installed on your individual um, uh, device, and you simply can do that by clicking on the gear menu and um, after you've connected with Echo 360. If any of uh, you have questions, your great team with Sandy and Joe can help you get that downloaded and installed. When you click on that, you do have two options, a Mac or a PC. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, they are both the same experience. So don't worry that one looks different from another. If you have maybe a PC and a Mac at home, you can use both and you can download it on both. Once you've downloaded um, Echo 360 um, and you have an icon on your screen that looks like this, this is the Echo 360 Universal Capture icon. 
Okay. Once that's installed and you've linked Echo 360 with your Blackboard, you have your menu across the top. I want to start by showing you how you can create a Universal Capture Personal, sorry, Universal Capture Personal um, recording for your convenience. So you won't have all of these options. You'll have new capture and upload media and Zoom. This is something that won't probably be available to you. I'm on a demo account. When you do that, you can hit new software capture and it's gonna launch Echo 360 Universal Capture. Um, mine will not show my video because um, I'm in Zoom and it can't capture two videos at once. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is name this. So we're gonna name this NCC Demo. You can publish it to your library if you want to take a look at it before you share it to your students, or you can go ahead and publish it directly to a course. And we're gonna go ahead and publish it directly to this course. You can add a description and a tag. Um, we are gonna talk about live streaming right now, but it is something that's available to you. Um, when we do this now, we have, um, what would be most likely a picture of us, but I'm on Zoom, so it's not gonna capture two cameras here. You wanna make sure that your um, audio is working and your display functionality. And then once you do that, you um, get five seconds to make sure you're ready to prepare and you can deliver your content. So in this manner, let me go back to my class. I can bring up my presentation and I can now talk about different ways that Echo 360 can be used in um, a variety of ways. So at Indian River State College, which is another community college, I believe in Florida, this instructor teaches completely online in an asynchronous manner. She does a variety of different uh, uh, methods of teaching. She does a lot of modules for her students to review before they come to a live class. And um, no worries if you don't um, hear everything that I'm saying. I do have articles that correspond with all of these that I'll send to you after. Um, she has found that by doing this, she can foster a deeper connection with her students online, very similar to what she gets in a, a real physical classroom. Southern Illinois University um, found that he was using Echo 360 in a manner uh, that really allows to, allowed him to transition very quickly to online and hybrid. He was doing um, modules for students to review before and after class. He also asked them to participate in discussions. Um, Echo 360 has a discussion tool that where you can put question prompts throughout your presentation for students to correspond with one another. And that has really allowed him to deliver the same content that he did in a traditional manner, but deliver it online. Medgar Evers was also tasked with very quickly um, transitioning his uh, brick and mortar classes to an online. So he has listed a variety of different tips to um, have a successful online teaching experience and it all starts with the syllabus. So right from the time the students come in, they are um, connected with Echo 360 and he reviews that syllabus through video and through the content um, right online. So, and he also provides little um, ways for students to earn extra credit by engaging with Echo 360, um, watching the videos, asking questions and also um, participating in poll questions. And finally, Coastal Carolina University is one that talks about how um, she uses it. Um, she teaches Chinese and there needs to be a lot of practice in that. So she has quick five, six minute videos that she shares with her students so that they can practice over and over again. And she also uses it for video assignments. So again, all of these are definitely ways that you can engage with your students and um, use Echo 360 in a variety of modalities. So I have now done this recording for two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and I'm going to stop it and it will upload and automatically um, move to that classroom that we just showed. So let's go back and, and go back into the Echo 360 system now and we talked a little bit about using Echo in a completely asynchronous manner. That is when you're going to provide some content before or after class. And you can set up different um, classes, different modules for your students to go through. 
You also can t use Echo 360. I think the way most of you here at um, Northampton are using it is in a completely synchronous modality. In that case, you can use it for hybrid, such as what we're doing right now, where students can join a Zoom meeting. Um, they can also follow along with content. In that case, I have a presentation already uploaded here, um, and students would log in to either Zoom or log into Echo 360, and I would upload the presentation and they can follow along. Echo 360 also provides the ability to um, put questions into the presentation. When they do that, um, students can go through and answer in real time and you can share those answers and discuss it with your students, okay? Um, you can put these in a variety of different ways as well. One other thing that we have recently added, which is extremely helpful in an asynchronous modality, is gated quizzing. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. Echo 360 has the ability for multiple choice, short answer, image quiz, which would be great for the healthcare, where you may want your students to identify um, an abnormality of these issues of, of an image or something particular. That all can be done. So I'm going to go ahead and reset some of these uh, so that we can go on the student side and show you what it looks like from a student's perspective um, to go through a presentation in real time. So as I mentioned, I was I am inside as an instructor in Echo 360. Okay, but I am now going to jump in to a student side. What you'll see here is that atmospheric forces during class. I have a presentation here. I'm in as a student, Michelle Jackson, and I've logged into Zoom, and I also have logged into my Blackboard account into my atmospheric forces classes where my instructor has added a presentation for me to review. So as I'm watching my instructor on Zoom, I can follow along their presentation and listen to what they are saying. When I get to the question in a live scenario, I can go ahead and answer that question and submit it, okay? Echo 360 also provides the ability for you as an instructor to have your students justify their answers. This is really great because if you're asking multiple choice or some type of answer where you aren't sure if they really know, this will allow you to see what they know or don't know or if they just took a guess. So. Um, so they in these you don't have to put this, but you can um, provide this as an option. We can then follow along as a student. All the different um, presentations as the teacher is coming. I'm going to go ahead and submit my answer here and move along. Now a few other things in the students' environment that I wanted to share with you. Students have the ability to take notes in real time or in an asynchronous manner. So they can take notes and it's going to uh, correspond whatever they say with the slide. Students can also ask questions. When they ask this, this is all kept confidential. Students can reference class content. They can post these questions anonymously, but you will have access to this in the instructor dashboard. They can bookmark specific areas of content and mark it confusing as well. This is what sets Echo360 apart from using tools that may be in your LMS, as well as just using your video conferencing, because there's all of these engagement tools and the corresponding analytics that you have access to as an instructor that aren't available. So we've went through this presentation as a student. I'm going to go ahead and jump back in as an instructor and take a look at uh, this presentation again. I see that I have one student submitted. I'm going to close the activity and show the correct answer. Okay. I also am going to go to that other one where I know that there's an image here. I'm going to close it, show the results, and show the correct answer.
Now, why is this important? Because in Echo 360 now, you have access to your analytics. You can look overall by class, how your students have um, reviewed different material, if they've watched the videos, if they've taken notes. You do not have access to the note events, but you will have access to um, which students took notes. Studies have shown, and um, it's actually in some of those um, presentations that I'll be providing to you, I apologize for that, that um, So in some of the uh, data that I will be providing to you, it does show how the um, analytics have been very helpful to the students and to the instructors for intervention purposes. In addition, you can look by individual students. So we can see that Michelle Jackson has um, a weighted engagement score of 63. She's been in 80% of my classes and you set all of these metrics for you uh, to see. She's viewed about 40% of the videos and um, slide deck views, polling participation. So all of this is um, specific to this student. Um, you can export all of this data as well. So again, Echo 360 provides a variety of different metrics for you. You also can check and see which students answered which questions in which way, and you have the ability to respond to these as well. So even if the students have um, submitted these questions in an uh, anonymous manner, you can still see which students answered or asked which questions. So you have the ability to reach out to them individually. You also have the ability to see who answered which way in a polling manner. And you can export all of this information as well. One of the things that Echo 360 recently added was the ability for embedded polling. So what I wanna share with you is a video where I have um, added an embedded poll into it. So let me just find it. Uh... Okay. So first of all, let's just take a look at this monster video so you can understand. This could be a video that you have uploaded or created anywhere. Okay, so this is a great video, um, but I want my students to review this technology, this subject matter and answer some questions. Echo 360 through our gated polling can now do that. So you can simply click add poll. You're gonna access this through your library. You can create a poll, or if you actually have questions that you've used before, you can insert them. But I'm gonna create a new poll. I'm gonna make it a multiple choice poll. And I've decided that I want a student to answer this one at 10 seconds in, so. So this will give me, and I, now both of these are correct. You can put questions that have quest, correct answers or not. You also can um, require that justification. I am going to add one more poll because I want you to see how it works. And I'm going to make this um, a short answer. I hope I'll make it a short answer. <laughs> Let me create one more poll. I'm going to do this as short answer. There we go. So, and I want this to be in at 20 seconds. It's really a good best practice for you to put these throughout to make sure students are watching the whole um, the whole video. Okay. So now that this is done, let's watch and show you what it looks like. 
Oh, I didn't hit save on the last one. Sorry. That's the one thing I always seem to forget. So let's create a poll. Um, let me put this one in at 10 seconds. You can add question options or delete them if you just want maybe a true and false. Okay, so now I have two questions in here. When I watch it, as a student, it will stop and require the student to answer the question before they can move on in the video. So this is a great way for you to ensure that your students are not only watching the content, but um, understanding the material. So once we move on, it will, once they answer that, submit their question, it will allow them to um, move on to the next point in the video and then stop when they get to that point as well. Okay, with this new functionality, Echo 360 does need to, um, does require at this point for you to share um, this through and the embed functionality in Blackboard. So I am gonna go ahead into my Blackboard instance. I think this is in my in Blackboard. So let me go back to my institution, my courses. And I'm, you can do it through a variety of different ways, but I am going to do it through, and I don't work in Blackboard that often, so bear with me. It's I, in assessments, I believe. So we're, I'm just going to do this as an assignment. You can do it a variety of different ways, but as an assignment where I can do this as NCC demo video. And you can pull to mashups here. I believe it's in this one. I don't think I'm in it. You would be able to find it under interactive media. I don't have the newest Blackboard open right now. Um, it does need to be in the newest where you can just go ahead and insert that. And then the students can go along and answer that question. Okay. So um, we've shown you a variety of different things that Echo 360 can do. We, um, the last thing I wanna concentrate on is the resources that are available to you. So in addition to you being able to um, use Echo 360 in a variety of different manners, ha have access uh, to it directly from your Blackboard, have access to the analytics, and excellent training that starts with um, Northampton Community College, Echo 360 has a variety of resources for you. So in addition to you uh, going to our Echo 360 support page or learn.echo360.com, you can search under our teaching and learning uh, to, for anything. So maybe you wanna just put in Blackboard and it will show you a variety of different things, uh, how you can use Echo 360 in Blackboard. You also can um, type in polling and you will be brought to a variety of different um, resources for you to uh, use polling based on what your role is. We have a variety of different um, instructor videos in our library to help you get started. You can click on those and they are brief three to four minute videos to help you get started. You can click on the Chevron and see a variety of different um, short two to five minute videos uh, to help you get started using Echo 360. Mary Jane, I think you need to reshare your screen again. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I think I when do I that move, all the time. When I move out of Echo 360, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Echo 360, we, we see it now? Yes. Okay. So Echo 360, you can go to um, help.echo360.com. You can simply type in instructor videos or instructors, and you will be brought to this page where you can click on the library on the online help videos. Very simple and easy. These are three to five minutes long. I would recommend that you start with your uh, team at NCC to make sure that you're connected. Uh, we also, in addition, have a variety of different um, resources on our blog. I will be sending you um, the link to the blog 
so that you can see how different instructors across the country and actually across the world are using Echo 360 and the benefits they are seeing. We also have a variety of different uh, videos and webinars that you can have access to. Um, we have, have held many different webinars on teaching in the age of COVID, uh, not only how to, but also why to. So these are all, will all be available to you and I welcome you um, looking at these at any time. There's no cost to this. You can look at them at your convenience. Sandy, any thoughts or questions? No, I think this is great um, for anyone that is not familiar uh, with Echo 360. Um, this was a great overview. There's just so much um, that you can do with Echo. Um, as I mentioned before, we're going to have um, several different um, sessions. This was giving me um, some thoughts too. You know, we might do just one little mini session on on polling, so we can just work with polling, or maybe one session just on analytics. So there's a lot to think about. Um, you've just had a very great um, overview of what Echo can can do. It's pretty powerful. And that's why we have adopted it here at NCC. So um, thanks, Mary Jane, for being here. Uh, for anyone else, if you would like to get started uh, before we have any other sessions set up, don't hesitate to uh, contact Joe or myself, and we will be glad to work with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So any anything else you want to add, Mary Jane, before we end? Not at this time. Thank you very much for um, joining us today. I apologize for my little uh, yappy puppy in the background, That's but okay. it added some fun to the presentation and we're here to help. So you have a great team there. Echo has great resources and we're happy to help you in any way that you can. Know that if there's something that NCC can't address, um, you can always email support at echo360.com. So we look forward to working with you all. Thanks, Mary Jane. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.